Uh, welcome to Build. I'm, uh, I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. For those of you watching from home, you can submit a question for our guests via the button right next to this video you're watching. Now, our next guests are not exactly what you'd expect from the host of a new reality show about investing in budding entrepreneurs across the country. They are Rooster McConaughey and Butch Gilliam, two self-made millionaires from Texas who take a bit of a different approach to sussing out whether a company is worth their hard-earned cash. Let's take a look at a clip of A&E's Rooster and Butch. Thanks to TV shows and movies, I mean, these entrepreneurs got this idea what business should be. They're prepared to give this PowerPoint presentation, blow smoke up our ass. Oh, there's our ride. Look at it. And what we're gonna do is cut the bull <laughs> But we try to come up with something that's gonna throw them off. We wanna let them know this ain't business as usual. What? Oh, man. Hang on, there's <laughs> a secret in here. Okay, what do they got here? All right. We regret to inform you we are currently tied up, but we have provided you with a means of transportation. <laughs> Under your nose, you all find a bicycle. Please head south down County Road 130. We'll be along shortly. Okay, what are we going to do with our bags? Us. Sincerely, us. <laughs> you know when this may look ridiculous? Just roll it to the side. And it is ridiculous. Honk that horn! I can't honk the horn. I can't even hold on to my bag. But we think you can find out a lot more about a person in a ridiculous situation than you can in a boardroom. Everybody, please put your hands together for Rooster McConaughey and Butch <laughs> Gilliam. Uh, guys, thanks so much for being here. First things first, what do we got in the cooler here? We got some cold bears. If anybody wants one, it helps. Like them old carriers. Got a guy in the back that says, is ready. Is He's ready. Can, already, can you dig it? This yeah. cat right here is ready. Rooster, on a, on a good day, how many, how many, how many millers do you think you take down? Depends on what day. A good day. Like, not, not, nothing, nothing's you know, upset I mean, you. You're just having a nice day. When we're doing a show, you know, 15, I guess. <laughs> That's not too many. Figure that out in 20 hours. Sure, it's mostly water. It's, it's, it's like a little beard, mostly water, right? The yeah, I mean, things, you know, it's, it's, what is it? It's hell, hell. 4% drink. alcohol. It's mostly water. The rest is made out of grain and barley. Yeah, and it's a healthy It's beverage. like cereal. It's like a liquid cereal. Yeah. I never, you know, I never thought of beer that way, but that's, I, I like you. that. That's it's taken me a long time to be, and my mother says I'm a seasoned drinker. I mean, you know, <laughs> took me 63 years seasoned. to get as good at it as I am right now. That's true. Yeah. One, one can only hope and dream yeah. that we could make I mean, it that way. We could I'm make passing it on down to my kids. <laughs> Guys, uh, you know, you, you made your money in, in, in different ways each, but when did you first come together to start sort of I investing together? I guess in... 2000, somewhere in there. And how did know. that happen? We ain't had money that long. You know it, I mean? It's a funny Not story. Like we. Actually, we've been competitors. And we act, by the way, we have real jobs. We, this is not what we do all the time. We, we, we work in the oil fields in West Texas, mm -hmm. and we've been competitors and still are in our real jobs for the last 40 years. And so we, we both have family businesses. And my family's helped me with mine, and he, as his has. And um, your family we, 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 was, com we compete with each other. Was you, uh, you're like a machinist, right? And you you sold you sold the company a number of years back. There's a movie called The Machinist. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all remember true, what he did? It's a weird movie too. Yeah. I think the guy was real skinny, wasn't he? Well, wait, I'm skinny. <laughs> I don't think he was redheaded. <laughs> And, no, he wasn't uh, ready. And so, so both of you had companies that sort of worked in the worked in the oil fields, yeah, and, yeah. and, and we similar, still do. You still do. We still have companies that are affiliated with with the oil field, and we it, we're in the uh, oil field pipe business. Uh, they call it OCTG, oil field country tubular goods, and we compete. We, we we have competed throughout the 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 four decades that we've known each other. And you still compete. And we still yeah. do. And, and that's part he of the wins. premise of the show. Yeah. He always says I win, but he wins more than me. Uh, that, that he said, and that's kind of part of the premise of the show is to, you know, let people know a little bit of our history and the fact that you can compete uh, in, in in such a way that you know you don't have to cut cut uh, the other guy down, cut his legs out from under him. You can it, it can be done in healthy competition. Healthy yeah. competition is a fair. good thing. Fight fair with your competition. And when did you guys, so when did you guys some, sort of come together to invest in other companies? Because I imagine you were doing it before it was a, sh a sh together before it was a show, right? We were. Oh, yeah. It, th th this show is a condensed version of how 
he and I do business with people. And he, Butch has always been about the person. You know, the person is the the biggest part of the investment. Whether no matter how good the investment is, I mean, it can be the greatest new thing there ever was. But if if you don't have a good person running it, then it's you know it's going to fail. Mm-hmm. Or if it doesn't fail, you're going to get screwed out of your money one or the other. But it's always you got to get to know who you're dealing with first before you before you even consider investing in their product. What uh, what led you to that discovery? Was there a person that you one time invested in that you weren't sure about their personality or who they were, and then that showed to be true in, in how the investment turned out? Well, you know, people in any business are, are always the most valuable part of it. I mean, that's that's the people are what run the business. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we've, we've both uh, made mistakes and chose people that we – we thought we knew who we were dealing with and found out once you put mix a little money into the equation, you know, and then the real person, you know, comes out. That's, that's happened to us. Uh, but, but we picked a really good, you know, when you pick a winner, um, the business is most likely to, to, to succeed. Um, so we, we're real careful with, with, with the selection of Did that of ever people. happen to you guys, that money messed with who you were? And you had to sort of figure it out and reclaim who you were? Absolutely. I mean, it, you know, like, and, and to add to what he's saying, I mean, you, uh, I'm in charge of showing people what not to do. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm the accelerator. He's the brakes. I, I, I've kind of made some bad decisions on investments and stuff and getting it with the wrong. I'm moving a little quicker and, uh, he's helped me and that's why we're a good team. You know, I mean, and, and yeah, I, I, I got completely, I went broke when I, you know, by the time I was 30 years old, made a million dollars for like a day, but. It was over. Bank how, did, how, did, how did that happen? Was you can do it. It was, it was a, kind of a Donald Trump million dollar millionaire, you know, where I couldn't, couldn't okay. turn it. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't cash it all in make, and turn it in a million that day. But, I, you know, my assets were worth that. But all of a sudden, the banks went under. And, and I looked back. I looked at myself that day, and I said, you know, I've, he was working in the machine shop, and I was out flying around going to Vegas 25 times a year. And that was only one year I did that because it, it takes a lot of money to do that. <laughs> but, you, know, you know, I ain't that stupid, but. But uh, but just just I, I kind I I've kind of forgotten where I you know my roots and I looked up and said you know I'm just going back to the manual labor and see if I can start all over again and and my competitors helped me I I didn't have to ask for help people came to me and offered me help and he was one of the ones that he was one of my competitors of course I wasn't much competition when I was broke but he <laughs> he just said man I like you in the game yeah. he said it was so much funner when you were in the game. So you came to him and, and, and helped him when, when, when he was down at that point as a competitor? Well, yeah, I mean, we've helped each other throughout the years. Um, again, even though we're in the same business, um, he's, he's kind of the junk man of, of, of what he does. Would, would, is that fair to say? Well, it's absolutely that fair to say, but I didn't want the whole world to know I, I, about I didn't want to. I thought that was like, a, I mean, you have to go tell the whole guy. Is there a world. N- nicer way to tell people that you're a junk man? Well, I mean, yeah. uh, he he, he doesn't use the equipment. How would that be? Yeah, whatever it is, yeah. Uh, but, you know, you junk know, man's going to rip. That's well, all they're going to remember. No, actually, when, when he was afraid to sell someone a product Act that like he's going to get sued, he said, buy from, buy from Curly's. Sue them. They've got better insurance than I have. I or, as a matter of fact, he never had insurance. So, I don't know. <laughs> you decide. One of the things that one of the things that I like about Rooster and Butch is when you were, you know the other real uh, the other investment show on TV is, is Shark Tank and they have multiple people that they see over the course of one episode with Rooster and Butch you guys are because it's all about the people the whole episode is about you spending time with this one business and doing different activities with them along with hearing their pitch is that how you guys operate outside of the show as well or did you sort of add some well, we're, fun we're just that? we're kind of slow. You, know, you, you can only do you, one. You are, are kind of slow. <laughs> 16 beers a day. No, I, mean, yeah, I, mean, I, I said 15. You said but, we, but, we, no. we. You got a mouse in your pocket. <laughs> but the thing is, it's like I said, it, it's in life that's how we do it. But, I mean, it, it takes longer to get to know people. I mean, you get, you know, for instance, if we, you came to town and you had a deal or whatever like that, and we, came, and we, we kind of jived with you, we liked you, well, you're going to go, we're going to go do some things outside of, of the you know, you, you're going to walk in us and go, hey, I got this big deal. I want you to talk about it. I mean, think about it. When you walk into somebody's office and they're sitting behind a big desk and you walk in there, you know you got to keep their attention for just that for so long. Well, we try to level the playing field. We try to get it where we get, we want to get to know you. We want, we, you know, we want you to be on the same level we are. Just because we got the money doesn't mean we're any better than you are. 
you got the idea. So we just want to get to know them and, and everything kind of be just level where they're not nervous and all that. We're more about inspiration than intimidation. Where do you guys come up with these ideas for how to level the playing field with them? Well, I, the <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it, it looks like we're always always trying to pull a big gag on them, but you just, just get them, get them outside, get them in 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 the environment, get them in our environment, and uh, go have some fun with them. Let them relax. Talk to them a little bit about who they are, what they are, where they're, where they have been, and where they plan to go. And uh, try, try to you know let them. A lot of them come from all over the country. We've even had some come from out of the country. So you know when they get there, they're they're out of their element. They they don't. They don't know who we are. They're probably a little bit intimidated. and So we just want to have fun with them and relax with them and try to get them to, you know, get in a mood that, that, or a forum that, that they'll be honest with us, with us about what they're worth and what they think they're worth. Because every, just about every one of them comes to us got an overly inflated uh, uh, evaluation about their company and about what their expectation as to what they think they can make it do. That might have been my favorite part of the episode that I, that I watched is when you inform the company you're dealing with of how much you think they're actually worth. Yeah, yeah. I think he started crying, to be we honest. We actually <laughs> don't. When they hit us with it, that's the first time that we, you know, it's pretty much wide open. I mean, when, when they call, we decide we're going to bring them down. When they come down and we see them, that, that is when we meet them. And that's when they start, at the very end when we were talking to them, that's when they, they tell us how much they want. And, then, and it's shocking what they want, you know. Because we, you know, we've been kibbins around, goosing each other for God dang three, you know, three days or something like that. And all of a sudden they go, well, I, we think we're worth $25 million. Well, wait a minute, man. What do you mean? You wasn't worth the shit of anything we got you to do over here. I mean, I mean we come to this $25 million deal, you know what I mean? So, it's, so it, it's, when you see it, we're like, that's the first time we hear it. Is overvaluation... Um, would Pain you in the ass. Would you say that's the biggest mistake entrepreneurs make or, or, you know, guys running their business? Or is there another mistake that you see over and over again that is really the biggest mistake that sets people back with their ideas and their companies? I mean, overvaluation is something they, they seem like they always do. Now, we've had some people that have offered to give us part of their company. Just, we'll just give it to you just because we want you on your team. Well, you know, equity in a losing deal is not really that. <laughs> it's a detriment. <laughs> I don't know, if, you know, if anybody knows that, you know, if you own 25% of something that's losing $200,000 a year, you're, you know, you're getting ready to lose $50,000 a year. So, I mean, you know, so it's, it's, it's that's not always a way to, to do it. Well, someone giving something away for free is rarely enticing. You're feeling, wait, what's the well, you just drawback here? Show, what's, what's yeah. the catch? Yeah, if it's free, if it's, if it's uh, you know, if it's free, it's too good to be true, it usually is, you know. Uh, but a lot of them seem to... Um, not really know what to do with, you know, they got an idea mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, they, there's some, you know, usually somewhere in the, in the, in the um, journey of trying to make the thing come to fruition, but they're, they're usually stuck. They're kind of in a, in a stagnant spot, you know, and then oftentimes they come to us and we find that they just need more than a, a, maybe an investment, just some mentorship as to what do we do. Uh, we just, you know, we've never been here before. We don't know how to go out and find, you know, avenues to sell this product or, or people that will help us, to, you know, help us develop it. Oftentimes things are halfway developed and needs, you know, needs more work done on them. There'll, there'll be one of them on this uh, season that is a great idea, great person, great people that are helping him, but they're just, the thing just needs more technical, technical development. And so, you know, whether or not Rooster and I can be that um, vehicle to help them, you know, f f further uh, expedite their process, we try to at least put them with someone that can. What's the, what's the biggest mistake that investors make? Get in a hurry. Get in a hurry. Everybody wants to be worth a gazillion dollars overnight. And we don't feel sorry for them one tiny bit because, I mean, he and I, he and I had nowhere to go up when we were young but up. And and take your time, you know. I mean, and, and plus, if you're doing something you really enjoy, you know, we you know I wear people out with this. I mean, don't measure success with with wealth. I mean, if you're doing something you really enjoy, be careful before you go do something that you're making more money at and you don't enjoy. Because I mean, I, you know, I'd rather have fun. You know, I'd rather have fun losing money and be miserable making money. Yeah. 
And it just do it. You know, if you got something you really enjoy, well, there's nothing wrong with that. There's, success is a big word. Do you think having uh, lost money at 30 and then having made money, you know, what was it, 10, 15, 10, 15 years later, really helped so that the money didn't change you at that point when you finally made it? I think that had, yeah, probably so. Because it took us, you know, it took, uh, losing it in the beginning was probably the best thing that ever happened to me. I learned from that. Where he he went the, the channels of the, of the true American dream, I and mean, he built it up and stayed the course. Where I jumped around and did whatever, you know, and learned my lesson here and there. I think I'm still alive in a minute. I completely learned my lesson. But, you know, I mean, I've always been good at making it. I just wasn't too good at holding on to it. And, and, uh, is that still the case? <laughs> Ken, Ken, yeah, a little bit. He, he, he's got some. I've been in a lot more bad deals than he has, but he always puts some back for me saying, I'm going to set a little bit, that, little bit of that back for you in case you need it one day. <laughs> <laughs> but it just sounds like you really take care of him. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> what do you call it? Uh, I'm, I'm the brakes and the accelerator. Butch, you ever heard of uh, Butch Cassidy and Sun Dead Kid? He's Sun Dead Kid. He t I get us in a bind, he bails us out. Let's get some questions uh, from our audience. Who has a question out here? Who's a, right, right there? Uh, I just want to know, what do y'all think Gil is up to right now? Gil? Oh, Gil, I'm glad you mentioned that. Hold on just a minute. You know about Gil? Gil Prather, the, he, we call him the old man the kid. The old man kid, the old man kid. Hold on, let, let, let me pull out another real baron. Favorite, Gil. Just speaking of Gil. Thinking about Gil. I, you know, I said I was going to do this for Gil. Gil, this is for you, my friend. When you can do, can't do when, what you want. When you, when you can do, can't keep up with your want is, to. Right there. there he is, there the he old is. man kid. The Give old man. Give it up for the old man kid. The old man from the Rio Grande. He's actually, his songs are coming out on iTunes and Bandcamp today. Oh, right, right on. And, that's something, and the guy can sing. I'm telling you, look at that. You, should, you don't even know what comes out of that hairy face of his. <laughs> and he does, he does, he has like two different sounds. One with his teeth in, one with his teeth out. <laughs> uh, let's get another question from the audience. Howdy, guys. Hey, hey, how you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Uh, my main question is, when you guys originally started, did you guys start with absolutely nothing, or did you guys have a little bit of something to, to actually boost up? To what you need to go? My daddy, when I was 12 or 13 years ago, I, got, I, I threw a smoke bomb in a lady's Volkswagen and caught the seat and burned the car up. And my daddy handed me a broom and a shovel, and that was how I got started. Pointed to the floor where the shavings in the floor worked in a Quonson Hut machine shop. And what, you know, a half round machine shop? Hotter than hell in the summertime and freezing cold in the wintertime. My sister Ann right there worked with me in it. She remembers. It was hard work. And uh, that's where I got started with a broom and a shovel. I hope the statute of limitations over on that smoke bomb you burned that thing. I didn't know that thing shot fire out of it before it started smoking. <laughs> you kind of, I mean, I, I work, you know, my dad was one of these guys that said, you're supposed to start working when you start walking. And, and you know, I did a lot of odd jobs. He had service stations. I worked in them, you know. You just did, you didn't know any better, you know. So you just kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it. And eventually, you know, you just start, you save a little money here, save a little money, which I wasn't that good at. But yeah, I mentioned that. But I mean, you, and you just learn whatever you're doing. And, you know, if you, if you decide you're going to be good at something, learn whatever you're doing. And that doesn't mean if you go on, on your own one day that you're screwing your boss around. You know, I mean, learn, learn. That's just, that's just business. You learn what you're doing. Learn that, learn that thing that you're doing. And, and if you go on your own, you go on your own. And a lot of times you're going to find somebody. Just People are going to invest in people that they like. It doesn't make any difference. You've got trust in people. People are going to help you. Don't, it'll come to you. Don't worry about it. What was your first job? I Thank you I for the working, question. I had a little, I had a little milk, a little milk uh, crate, and I did windshields at a service station. And I did them better than anybody. Man, that's when you did it with a squeegee. <laughs> what was your first job? Outside of the smoke bomb. Oh, it was... Where, it was a, it? Yeah, it was... Yeah. My mother and daddy drug me to the show. Was, I can remember when I was... Uh, before I had my driver's license, our, our business phone rang at home. And uh, I would do uh, a, a process called Magnaflux. And, and uh, it's where you look for cracks in, in uh, oil field tools so that, you know, when you use them, they don't break off and junk out the well. But uh, I can remember at night, the phone would ring. Mother would come... 
wake me up and take me to the shop because I didn't have a driver's license and uh, I'd magnaflex those tools. And then after school, she'd pick me up and drive me out there and I, I cleaned up the floor. And that's where I got started. And uh, it's the only job I've ever had. It was with my mother and daddy. If it wasn't for them, I'd, I'd be driving a truck somewhere and probably be lost. And he still likes sweeping stuff up. I guarantee you before he leaves here, he'll want to sweep yeah, up. Yeah, you got a broom? Let me help you. He kind of goes in another world of his own when he's got a broom in his hand. That, that's a great thing. That's a sign of a, an incredible work ethic is when someone is still, like, wanting to sweep the floor no matter what position they've ended <laughs> yeah. up in in, in yeah, their yeah. life. Well, like he tells the story about, you know, when you work by the hour, the only time it got good is after you worked 40 and got in that overtime. Yeah. And I hated it when they sent us home. You go, yeah, man, you got too many hours, you got to go, wait a minute, I mean, I've worked all this week, now i got to go home. You know, but the overtime was, was what you looked for. I mean, that's all some people, I mean, most people work by the hour. And, you know, that's the, that's the only windfall extra they're going to get is working overtime. So I, I remember those days, uh, punching a time card, you know, right behind the, you know, get a line, punch a card, go to your machine, work hard all day, and... Um, Maybe you know, maybe you could work a little overtime or on the weekends, which we did, nearly every weekend. And and again, that's how we we made our money. What we're doing now, we get the opportunity to make, you know, you, you, with the investments we make now, we can stand to lose, you know, pretty proportionate amount of money, or you could make a lot. So, we just progressed into that, and we learned. We we stuck with what we were doing. That's the main thing. I think that's yeah. you know, everybody asks, well, how do you do it? How you, there's no magic to it. We just got involved in something that we thought we could learn how to do, stuck with it, figured it out, eventually got pretty good at it, and just stayed the course. And we waited for, and we never had aspirations of becoming wealthy. We just wanted to pick something to do, pick a job, do it, do do as good as we could at it, and then let what happens, you know, happen. What you just described is 98% of like what makes success in any field you know like so often we have actors and directors up here and people ask well how did you do it how did you make their movie or how did you get to this point in your career and they're like i just do it and i learned it and i figured it out and people wanted to hire me to do it eventually yeah that's right when people yeah. ask us why we want to even do this I mean, we are trying to give back because we got breaks people helped us i mean it's just like that guy that came over and asked that question while you look in his eyes and you see sincerity and energy in that guy's eyes he really wants to know he's not up here just spoofing us and that, and that that's something that we want to we don't have that as much anymore, you know? I mean, we're not trying to be billionaires for sure. You know, we're, we're just happy where we are. And just to see that energy, like you said, that people, young people bring in to, you know, and, and, and we used to have kind of a bad attitude about millennials until we got to know them. And a lot of the people come on the show are millennial, millennials. And don't take this negative, but they're trainable, you know? <laughs> They ain't screwed up like it. They ain't been at it that long, so they are trainable. And I don't want it to sound like I think they're, you know, a jumping dog in a circus. I mean, they, you know, I've really got grown to have a lot of respect for them. I think I have time for one more. What do we got? Right sure, here? I have a, a more entertaining question. What is the strangest product that someone has asked you to invest in? God, dog, no, we got an easy answer for that a one. A good one. And we're unanimous answer. Unanimous. The, the, the guy brought up this ghost detecting device. <laughs> And hold on just a minute, Gil. Hold on just a minute, Gil. And this guy right here, Gil believes in ghosts. And it's mainly because Butch says. And he's upside down, too. <laughs> because Butch says he may already be a ghost. <laughs> That's well, why they, the doggone thing goes it off. It works. Every time Gil walks past it, it goes off. It's called the Outer Realm Pod. How can you remember that? Because remember, we, we, we know that guy. Remember, he I mean, came on the show. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't, I don't, I don't recognize you. Know, you I Tell you what, you watch the episode. A lot of weird things happened the night that we um, uh, filmed with this guy named Eric. And he has, a, again, a, project, a product called the Outer Realm Pod. And we filmed in this old, old hotel. And a lot of weird things happened that night. And that's all I can say about it. So did you end up investing in it? I think We're that's still going on, on yeah. Still working yeah. on it. That was uh, yeah. a surprise Look. visit. He was remember Gil. I think invited him when supposed to. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. we we wound up liking him and uh, and the, the, the product. Uh, it looks like a, it looks like a a red tail light tail light that fell off a, a, a tractor. It's a, it's about what I mean. It's not very much to look at, but we had a lot of fun with it. 
Um, guys, I love the show. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, it premieres, right? Is it, is it tonight that it tonight. premieres on A&E? What time? You got no excuse if you don't watch it. <laughs> it's happened. Don't say I had to go on vacation because it's happening tonight. <laughs> guys, give a round of applause for uh, Rooster McConaughey and Thank Butch Gilliam. Let's hear it. <laughs>